Welcome to Still Please Galaxy of Heroes. This is Grand Arena, the first match of season 43, a 3v3 season. We began this season in Kyber 2. We're putting this stuff up a little bit late because I had a lot of computer technical difficulties over the past couple weeks and we have been transitioning over to a new computer. I was able to capture the footage of my matches though. We just need to record audio over them and now that I've I needed to take some time to get myself situated. And we now are, so we can now get caught up. So look out for regular videos over the next several days as we get caught up with Grand Arena. With this week's Kyber 2 bracket, again, we're in the liminal space between Kyber 2 and Kyber 3, so we tend to see some weird things here. My opponent is Geodes on the left-hand side. With He's very light on Zetas. Most players are 200 plus Zetas. He's at 176. There's actually another player in this bracket at 178 but most of us are in the 220 plus range I have the most with the GLs this is one of the things that we see when we're on the edge space between two and kyber two and three is we've got two seven GL players my opponent being one of them three six GLs one five and two of us are four GL players with the Omicrons a very similar kind of pattern here where we actually have players with 11 and 13 Amis, which is absurdly low for this level. I have the most at 20, and the majority of the bracket, though, is in the 16 to 18 range. Relic, units, and depth. What we see here is my opponent is pretty shallow at 157, especially for 7 GLs. What that means is he probably doesn't have a lot of relics outside of GL requirements, because really, with a 3 GL advantage, he shouldn't be 30 relics more than me. The rest of the bracket, though, is is fairly minimal 161 is the most there's or no 163 is the most there's a couple players in the 160 range with depth most rosters are pretty respectable with depth it's a lot easier to do this these days with the create dragon raid making that so much easier to accomplish is very easy for players to replicate what i've already done with my gear 11 plus depth and i've shown throughout the, my entire channel is showing how just how effective that can be but so we're not seeing any one with egregious Egregiously weak rosters. Well, actually, there's one guy here at 151, uh, but we probably won't be seeing him. Geodes, my opponent, though, is respectable, but a little shallow at 187. Relic distribution. He's got a small advantage. He's got a meaningful advantage in the tier 8s, uh, but really what we're seeing is his relic advantage is being spread out through the different relic levels. And there's one player who... Is he on the screen here? Elkez Atez. You know, I need to move this browser so things are a little bit more visible visible he's not on screen here let me make the bigger screen Alcazatez here he has a lot of a lot of tier 5 relics at 84 he's probably the strongest player in terms of relics here we made a small little adjustment so things are a little bit more legible we're working on a new machine these days so I gotta adjust all my settings and my scenes so that they're the way that I like it with the mod game there is some everyone's good but there are some slower players, and I am the best with the top 25 average of plus 25.9. There is one player. The guy who has the best relics has the second best mods at plus 26.7. With the top 500, I'm the second best player, and Elkez, the guy with the best relics he is beating me out there so i'm beating him on the top 25 average he's beating on me on the top 500 average with the datacrons participation is acceptable but i'd say only three of us are engaging them at a high level but there's at least a medium level of participation across the board with the galactic legends two players without java four of us without lord vader everyone with jmks and jmls there's one player without Sith Eternal Emperor, and now I that is no longer me. That has very regularly been me before in the past, uh, but I only have a Relic 1 Sith Eternal Emperor for this week because of the Leviathan. All those materials have got to go towards the Leviathan right now. With Rays, three of us without, and I'm the only player without SLKR. Me there is surprisingly one player here without Melgus. You can see Elkaz Atez at the end of the screen here uh, with Without Melgus. Most players have. No, there's a mix between three Ami and two Ami. Uh, 
Melgus is, but everyone who has them is at Relic 7 or higher. The Radises look fine. Idens, there are two players without even a gear 12 Iden, three of us with gear 12 Idens, and three with Relic Idens. It's something I'm going to start paying attention to because it, it's really a good sign for how effective a fleet is going to be at clearing efficiently. It's something that I can't really do in a reliable fashion. Like At gear 12, I don't like the Chimera Executor counter. It is not, it, it's a gamble in my testing in Fleet Arena. With Star Killers, they're kind of all over. They're, uh, the 7 GL or 7 Relic level Star Killers is actually the minority here. Only three of us with Relic 7s. The dashes are whatever, Wampa. I am the, no, there's only two of us with a Relic 7 Wampa. He really deserves to be higher. My opponent does not have Savage at a usable level and at level one. That's something that, like you shouldn't have any player. If, if you're a more mature account, you should not have a level one character. The Savage armies though, oh, two players without the Savage army or a usable Savage. With Treo, two players without the Trey army. Two of us in the bracket have Afra. Two uh, player, three players without like a meaningfully usable Swolo, but two of them without him at all. I didn't, or not I didn't, Zoris are, basically two of us have a usable Zori. There is one third sister in the bracket, but it's the guy who has only 11 Omicron, so he's probably not going to be a big participator, and we might not even see him. And the Rexes three maybe four rexes but rex is not a character i'm finding can meaningfully punch up at this point with lower gear characters not like some of the other characters we've seen and then pay attention to maul for the modding leviathan wise oh there is only one player with a leviathan in this bracket and three player four players without a full star or full seven star profundity taking a look at the quality of my opponent's modding he's Pretty solid here. So with this, he has about 27 characters modded at 300 speed or faster. Count Dooku is the final character here. So you can see like Trench, Star Killer, they're falling below. But some very good characters above. You, Basil of Fallen, probably one of those characters you'd like to have faster who was below the threshold. In terms of defense, he attacked first, and you can see he didn't full clear. And my defense did some work this round. You can see Trench getting a bunch of holds, Malgus picking up a hold, and up top we get Bosk, Grievous, and the Tuscans all getting several, all holding four attempts each. Really impressed with how, with how that performed. Profundity here getting two. And then he was out of teams. His shallower roster really couldn't grind out this many many attempts. But, you know, very impressive performance, even though he struggled with the defensive teams I set down. Now we got Melgus, Jabba, Lord Vader, and Ray down below. Newt, Grievous paired with that Aiden. So they're very top heavy with the teams. I did plan out a strategy here. And I don't think I Twitch streamed it. I'm trying to remember the specifics, but this I had to play, I think, fairly quickly. And without a plan, I just, or not without a plan, without having an extensive plan, I just went into this one and started playing this partly on instinct, partly just looking at uh, a few, few teams. I think at a certain point you'll see where I l stop having a plan. Now, we go after Ray, get rid of the damage immunity so we can trigger her, not damage immunity, get to the, get rid of the crit hit immunity so we can bring her into the yellow a little faster. I used to do Swolo first because he's a little scary, but it's, it's, was overly concerned about it. You know what we need to do? We need to switch to the big screen. We'll do that in a moment after this match. Damage immunity is still on Swallow, so we are waiting until it comes off. That's why we're going with the stun. We don't want to use Unleashed while he can't be hurt. Take the hit. And now we do Unleashed. 
and everybody goes down real quick. And as we transition into the larger screen here, the next match, we're going to take a look at Lord Vader, because that's GL, and we need to know if, how these matches are going to go. Do, are we going to need to clean them up, or are we going to have a successful run in the first attempt, and then we can decide what kind of teams we need to retain? Like, Do we need to keep a Fennec around? Do we need to keep an Afra around, or JML? in a worst case scenario to clean things up. So we bring in JMK, we throw the damage immunity over onto Kenobi so he can tank a bunch of those hits from Maul. And on uh, Kenobi's turn we go after Maul, self-select him, we're trying to get to the ultimate quickly. And Maul's a character who, now that the Datacron is off, we, these Lord Vader teams are not as problematic and we're able to get to the ultimate quickly, ignore the taunt and take out Maul. And now we can work on taking out Royal Guard and we haven't used the Force Leap yet. So now we can take out Royal Guard. And now we can pretty much auto soon. I just want to manage the first portion of this to make sure that Kenobi plays it the way that I want him to play it. I want to get to a full charge of the ultimate, get a couple armor shreds onto, onto Lord Vader, and there we go, and from here, I should auto. Do I not? Yeah, and there we go, now we've autoed. We're playing this on 2x speed, maybe we should be playing it on 1.5, but I don't know, I just felt like making this go a little fast. I think we are going to bring this down to 1.5x speed after this one. This feels a little fast to me. Now continuing on to these next matches. We're going to head back. We're going to head up top. We want to take a look at these teams because really we're, we want to hit the GLs first because the way that I need to play these matches I need to know if I need to retain squads are things going to spin out of control what teams are safe to use or not uh, CLS is an easy Savage and I don't want to chance it like you can Savage solo, but you guys have also seen me with my Savage solo failing a couple times, so I decided to play it safe. I want to win the match, so I'm just going to go in with a couple sides and be safe from there. This you can just hit auto. Plus, I haven't used the Savage Kron too, too much. I think maybe not at all. I don't know when I took him to Relic 7 exactly. Maybe I did it just before this match. Maybe I did it a couple weeks ago during 5v5. But I don't have a ton of data on how I feel about the Savage Crown. Because parts of it with how it's removing turn meter, I'm not convinced it helps. I'm, I'm, I, I think it helps on defense. I don't know if it helps on offense. So I just wanted to guarantee that that was going to go smoothly because if it wasn't going to go well, then I could have been put into a more difficult position. This is my first time with Sith Eternal Emperor's ultimate and him at Relics. We didn't have him. We've had him for a month. We slow played the farming of the tickets to save on crystals. And throughout 5v5 when we had him, we, he was just at gear 11 and gear 12. Now that we are done with, the, now that we have the ultimate, this is my first test of him at Relic 1, because I had to save signal data for the Leviathan. I couldn't afford to take Sith Eternal, up, Sith, Sith Eternal Emperor up higher with the Relics. So I'm going into this just hoping that Relic 1 is sufficient. I do bring in Malak because from Looking at things, it did seem like having a tank was going to help a lot. I didn't want to bring in Watt, but Watt, Watt's on defense anyway.
And what's really nice and impressive is this all goes really well. Now I do opt for Bass LaShawn to link instead of Revin. At some point I'll try Revin and make it make my own determination on who I prefer to go after first, but I tend to think Fallen is the bigger risk, but these days Revan is higher relics because of the Leviathan. I may alter my thinking on that. But here I was really happy that I don't have to gas a Melga squad anymore, especially now that all these Melga squads are Leviathan ready, or at least Darth Revan is Leviathan ready. Which makes it, the gas counter so much less reliable. So now that I can have a reliable counter up against Melgas, it's really nice. Although, Sith Eternal Emperor is going to be really important for countering Treya, or not Treya, for countering Third Sister as well, using Sith Eternal Emperor with Treya. So I'm also hoping for Jedi Knight Cal Kestis, who does feel like he's going to be potentially just a dedicated Melgas counter. And I am... Kelkest is ready. Now heading to Jabba here. This I take I, I have to gamble on. We don't we don't have a lot of counters left. We JML we still have, but JML up against Jabba is not as great. This is something that I know works, that I've done a number of times. Where I'll bring in Treya and my goal is just to take out Kurzantin. And from the Treya lead, Bosch does get pretty weak from all of the attacks out of turn. Here I'm just trying to make a decision of did I want to taunt because I don't have Held by Hatred. The Omicron isn't, isn't fully active. I think portions of the Omicron work, but not obviously the trigger of Annihilate or the trigger of Held by Hatred. Now Kersantin is taken down. He won't revive. I don't got to worry about him anymore. Taking out Bosch is a bonus, not necessary. From here, I'm going to auto until the clock runs out. Or I would have needed to, except Rancor saved me a bunch of time. That's great. But now I know that I can clean up a Jabba with an Afra. And that's all I want to do. And that is a way to two hit a Jabba and save you other counters. Because with with Afra, Afra's a solid character, but like she can't do what Starkiller can do up against a Ray Swallow. And the a lot of the other teams she beats, there are other ways through. So this is kind of one of the more valuable things that she can do or that she does is she can clean up a Vader, she can clean up a Jabba. And having a nice, safe, reliable GL cleanup is also has its own value. And so this takes a little bit of time for the mastery stacks on the potency, but this is this is pretty good. Maybe another half a minute or so and it'll start looking better. But it's something that looks like it's not working until it does. But right there and like it's solid. And now I'm through a job. I've gotten through a 3GL defense, a pretty nice looking 3GL defense. And I still have a JML. Now we got Aiden. Now I can safely Wampa and Aiden. And this you just got to manage a little bit to make sure that Wampa's targeting the right people. But no big deal.
But at this point, it's also a situation where it's pretty safe that we're going to win this match, even though I know the result, but knowing that how many attempts my opponent took going up against my defense and not being able to full clear, I've now been able to get through the strongest teams on his defense and able to do it very efficiently, at least efficiently for my roster. And now I can feel pretty secure in doing some testing and still being able to win. Even if my opponent were to somehow come back and full clear, he would never catch up to me on banners with the amount of attempts it took him. Now, Jedi here, we're going to... Am I really going to shock T this? I should have just Jedi Knight Revan this. I, I, I'm trying to remember how this went. I think I remember how this went. I don't think this went well. And I should have just Jedi Knight Revan it. I think I might even have to end up using Revan on this. But it's like, you know how I am. I just, I want to use the cheapest possible counter. And sometimes that gets me into trouble. But this is a situation where I'm trying to focus in on the, the battle droid. Because I don't. if I go after B1, it's going to keep triggering B2 turns. But because I'm not going after B1, he's recovering B2 a lot. I should have just went after B1. I don't know if I... Yeah, so now I've changed my mind of how I want to approach it. But at this point, it's too late. Now I'm just hoping to take out B1. Yeah. I can heal up a little bit. Now I'm trying to take out B2 and seeing if we can turn this into a Grievous cleanup situation. And now B2 is gone and this can be a cleanup. And you guys probably know my favorite Grievous cleanup. Are we not going to do it yet? We're going to do Troopers? Troopers? Troopers. Jedi. See, I think I should have just used Troopers. I, the, the reason I go Jedi here is I'm still in the frame of mind that I have weaker Troopers because for years, I just like to show people how strong they were at gear 11. So even as I was going after Sith Eternal Emperor, I held back the gear on them until I was completely ready to, to farm tickets for Sith Eternal Emperor. So that, that's just, over that time, it's gotten in my head that them up against this squad is... A little dangerous like you can still beat it with gear 11 veers and gear 12 dark trooper but it is something that does have an RNG component so that's why I opted to use that strong the counter which just the now I can just use my troopers my troopers are relics now it's safe but I still I've got this old mode of thinking that needs to be retired. Now, Akbar Leia is one of my favorite ways to clean this up, but it doesn't quite work anymore because the characters I used to pair with Leia, I don't pair. And well, I guess in 3v3, maybe I should have thrown in maybe like maybe big bigs or something. But like you guys have seen me do this a ton of times and it was very reliable. And for whatever reason recently I feel like I've been losing a lot with it. Like it used to be something that I never lost with. And I feel like the last I don't know three times I've attempted this, it hasn't worked out for me. I don't know if it's modding's gotten better or cuz I'm not cuz the way that I used to do this was with Fulcrum. And I think that's the problem. It's, it's ever since Sir Junda has come along to make, to give Fulcrum a new team. I am not using the the reliable version of this, and it doesn't just it does not work the same without Fulcrum here. See, so 
I guess it's me saying that I'm a little disappointed that my very cheap Grievous cleanup is no longer viable. Because what that means is I need to do more expensive things to clean up a Grievous. The cat's messing with the keyboard. I'm hoping it's not messing with the record. So here you see me taking a long time deliberating about how I want to do this. And then I remembered about the Bad Batch, but, but we got preloaded turn meter here. So I'm a little worried about it because I got gear 12 on the Bad Batch. And without records, they're more vulnerable. But it goes great. And I clean it up without issue. The, the bigger issue is how long it took me to just remember the bad match. So back wall, we're looking at a BAM. Bosk lead, which is a terrible lead, Sortie, Tuskins, Mon Mothma. Now, did I say Bosk? I meant Boba Fett lead. Uh, Boba Fett lead is a terrible lead. The reason Boba Fett lead is terrible is he has a very conditional trigger on the payout, which is difficult to trigger for the AI, which means it's very unlikely that the conditions will be met for Boba Fett to, tri to trigger that. Uh, after we checked out what was on the back wall, we're safe to attack the stronger teams. Grand Inquisitor, Qui-Gon, kind of a dedicated thing. It's just strong. It's, it's disappointing that this is how I use my Grand Inquisitor, but it's the realities we all have to deal with. Fast and reliable goes great. Then with this next one here, we've got Tuskins. This is my favorite Tuscan counter. Hopefully this works, because this they have relics, and I've done this up against gear mixed gear this is the best tuscan team we've gone up against although there's no no this is fine there's no army on the raider they need the army there's no army so this is a nonsense team yeah so unfortunately you're not going to see what this looks like when it works because Maybe my opponent will drop the Omicron on Raider, because he did have to go up against this and see what it looks like in action. And I got far less gear than him. But the reason that works up against the Ami is the Vader's very good at getting the Tuscan Raiders very weak and then then Darth Talon has loyal hand and the AoE ability that stacks and gets stronger and stronger so it becomes very effective for her to eventually take out both of the Tuscans and then with how Talon's unique works she's very good at boosting up the speed and making sure Vader has an advantage. A GTR Swolo just a really excellent team that I feel like I'm the only person who uses and people who watch my channel are aware of. But Swolo's awesome. I don't, like there's just been this attitude in the community that he only works with Ray. And it, I, I need to make videos on it. Maybe, maybe that's a this week project. Swolo's great. 
am great with JTR. Now, that wasn't the best challenge for them. We've gone up against much better. So, oh, I still have Jabba. I forgot to put Jabba on D. That's right. This was the match I forgot to put Jabba on defense. I changed all my Datacrons, made sure that on defense I had Datacrons and everything and didn't notice that Jabba was uh, not set because last 3v3 season I had taken him off. Uh, so troopers with this gear 12 card dune, it's going to be very easy for me to trigger the turn meter train. And you see that we crush it. Now, bam. What do I do? Oh, we're going to try a Hondo thing. This is because I love Hondo, but this sometimes this can be reckless. And I forget if this was one of the matches where it was reckless. Or this was one of the matches where it was awesome. I think I remember how this went. Yeah, I think I remember how this went. Yeah. So you want the side characters to die off. That's why I like bringing like Kira and L3. I like L3 because it buys Hondo some time to for the 10 stacks of Ransom to occur. I like Kira because of her lead and because she calls an assist, which helps stack the Ransom. Now this is the mistake I made. I throw down Ransom. What I should have done was get rid of the debuffs and get Foresight up. And I think I would have won. But I didn't have enough stacks of Ransom. I left the debuffs on. And I could have cleansed. And I messed it up. Because that, that should have been safe. Once he gets enough stacks of Ransom, he just becomes a wrecking monster. So we're doing gas sortie. I don't even know if sortie's worth putting down without the datacron. I have been seeing a lot of sortie lately. I think that's partly because a lot of us have sortie at relics now because of the Leviathan, but oh, there's there's plenty of ways through a sortie. Gas is just a very strong way because it negates spare parts a little bit. The spare parts is a revive and gas is anti-revive. Uh, we are... You know what? I don't think this works. I'm, I'm trying to remember this match, but I feel like I was a little surprised by this result. You can see from the First week of Conquest, we didn't have a lot of the Jedi data grounds. I think I had two. I usually like to have way more, but I've been much more careful with crystals this Conquest. Partly just because there's less pressure to get level 9 data grounds with this set. Although I'm still going to do it, and I still think there's plenty of reason to do it. Just because there's a pay it forward capacity with Datacrons. Like, I got 16 million credits and like 3,000 of the like Mark 1 piece. Like, I had some pretty absurd amounts of accounts to go towards developing this set very quickly. So, you, I will still build out a deep bench of Datacrons even if we have fewer squads that we can place them on. There's plenty of reason to do it. Yeah, so they're here. So far it looks fine. We've taken out IG-11. Now they got damage immunity up. Oh, 
Oh, and because Bam did whistling, he, he took out Cassian with whistling birds. That's why Cassian stopped reviving from Jin. Which is too bad. Uh, because of the damage immunity, we're going after Bam, even though Quill gives uh, some added stats. But you can also see that we're not really having the damage output I would like. I'm a little... Okay, now we're in a good position. Yeah, I'm just trying to control Bam until we get to a position where we can take him out. And then we finally take him out. Yeah, never mind. This worked. This worked. But what I should be doing is using Scout Trooper, but I've been... At some point this week, I will remember that uh, about Scout Trooper for one of these matches. I think in this match, I think what I remember to finally do some testing here, I think I might pull out Rex. Like instead of doing JMO, I'm going to stop myself and do Rex. Do I? Never mind, I don't remember. So even though we were in a safe match, I did no testing, which is atypical for me. I prefer to do testing and I think it's because I didn't expect Rex to win and I knew Nisa wouldn't, but I forgot about Scout Trooper, who regardless of whether or not he would work, I would have wanted to test and see that because uh, he's new. And I did take him to gear 11 right away. So now we enter fleets. We're Malevolence Executors, the triple attacker one. This is... This one you can go Malevolence in a first attempt, not use a burner. The whole deal here is you take out IG-2000 first. This is a correct RNG, losing a Vulture Droid. That is... That can go any number of ways with the first attack. That's one of the better ones. I'm getting some turn meter being fed to me uh, by the vulture droids going down. But even though things start out fairly strong. Okay, so now we take out IG-2000, Slave 1 comes out. We still have a mark over on CAD. Now we're trying to take out CAD, but I'm probably gonna lose Hyena Bomber. We AOE, get some help and friends. And then they heal up Cad Bane. So we had some great RNG to start. I'm expecting Cad to stealth and uh, I land stun on both these guys. I want to get rid of Slave 1 quickly, but the one issue is Houndstooth is going to come out. And this puts me in a less ideal situation. Now I don't have a way to get around taunts I'm bringing out soldier because I can't afford to lose too many more ships and I don't get the ultimate off and we are now in a situation what we we take out slave one because of the buzz droids uh, but now we're in a situation where the ideal executor starters are left Maybe not ideal, but the other uh, executor starters are left, which is potentially problematic. So I gotta decide how I wanna deal with the rest of these ships. With the Sith ones, I've added a little bit of gear to some of these pilots on the Radish fleet. And now that these Sith ships are getting stronger, I wanna just keep testing my whole Radish theory. Like, I had a bunch of videos out about it long before the Leviathan came out. Like, this was my bet for at least the soft counter. And what I'm starting to feel about it is, I think the theory is there, but you might need to have, like, a GL Ray quality Radis squad to pull it off. Or it might need another ship. Like, it kind of needs another tank. Because the MG100 or whatever is not a great tank. I'm always bringing in the clone sergeant to replace the replace the uh, MG100 when it goes down. 
And it's a possibility that like the potentially leaked concept of uh, Zori Bliss's ship being a tank may have actually been a real leak and they just changed the timeline on it because of the leak. So it's something that maybe Zori gets a ship that will be released in the future that makes this more reliable up against the Leviathan. But you can see here we're down to one turn or one cooldown on the Radis ultimate. We don't have to worry about the Leviathan ultimate because we're going up against the exe the Executrix. So next turn, like we had, we get are able to take it out. So this is like the theory in action functioning up against the Sith ships. This is why I thought they would be a strong counter. Except in the Leviathan testing that I've done, it's not. It does not work the same because the Leviathan, it's a very fast capital ship to the point where like, it, it, he tends to get to his ultimate before the Radis does. And in a lot of my speculation, I was thinking because of how the Leviathan worked, how it like messed up reinforcements and things like that, that it suggested that the Leviathan might be a slower capital ship. Did not turn out to be the case. So we got a little bit of a cleanup to go on two fleets, and now we have the Chimera with the wrong ships. Because you can see the Scythe there with the Chimera. Scythe doesn't work with the Chimera. Like, Scythe is a dedicated ship. So he has set down his ships onto defense in a way that is going to be beneficial to me. Just like we saw a couple of these things with some of the squads as well. Right here I bring in the Chimera Tide Defender counter up against the, the Executor and I'm basically just hoping that the cooldowns are messed up in such a way that are going to be beneficial to me and not detrimental because they were going to have preloaded turn meter and so far it's working out great. Because And the reason you don't see me utilize this more often and regularly is because I have a Gear 12 Iden and in all of my attempts in fleet arena utilizing it it's not reliable at gear 12. sometimes it works sometimes it's just rng so in a grand arena context i don't want to rely on it when i can just usually two hit one or two hit with the malevolence it is a reason though for me to prioritize the iden relic that's pretty important something that I should get to but in a cleanup capacity right now it works out great and I take it down Perfect. there we go now two more fleets to approach now with Chimera here I believe I'm going to scythe this because it's my best remaining fleet. But what you end up seeing is how important it is to understand how to use ships correctly with the right corresponding pilots and capital ship commanders. So I'm going in with not a ton of stuff, um, does not have a tank on the starting lines, but what you see there are no tie, spawn TIE Fighters, because that's why you need to be using the Executrix for the Scythe to function as intended, 
he has a dedicated capital ship to, that has to be used. So it allows me to take out his scythe without too much problem. I landed buff immunity with the gauntlet to neutralize the Empire Bomber. Why do you call that Empire Bomber? The Thai Bomber. And from here I'm just focusing down on that. You bring out Thai Reaper, it generates a little bit of turn meter when ships go down, so that's giving me some turn meter. We lose the scythe, but at this point we've made a tough uh, a bunch of progress, and the shuttle is going to do great. The shuttle's a really powerful ship. And we are getting close to the ultimate. Heal up. I think he's got his ultimate, yeah, so we lose my ship and then he takes me out. So before I'm able to use the Executri Executrix ultimate, he gets another hold. So his fleet did get a bunch of holds from me. I'm down to my three remaining capital ships and I gotta decide how I wanna clean each of these up. With the Chimera here, I'm gonna, what am I gonna do? Raven's Claw. Raven's Claw makes a lot of sense. Because what I can do here is just very quickly take out these ships with all the assists. And uh, this ability takes turn meter, so I'll select the shuttle and pull the turn meter away. Now with the target locks, I can get assists. Second sister is the biggest threat, so I take her out. And now I can go after Palpatine. Just ignore TIE Fighters because they can generate turn meter. This is how I like to use the Phantom. I don't think the Phantom and Ghost pairing makes sense with the profundity. For a little bit of annoyance, I think it's kind of a waste of a turn and makes getting the profundity's ultimate off slower. Whereas I think it can help with the Raven's Claw because when it lands at target lock, it can help recover Biggs and keep Biggs alive. Now we're using Sith ships to take out Sith ships, except we got a more synergistic team. We don't have the bomber though, because we had to use the bomber with the Chimera. But we've got a capital ship and they don't. Which even though it's not ideal, like being able to force a taunt onto a tankier ship, like that helps. Because it's not nothing. There we go, full clear. So you can see the banner total here. Solid, strong, 1928 to 1495. I guess I had plenty of time in this. I think what was going on is just, I had a, things in the morning where I knew I wasn't gonna participate in the morning. So I was playing this late night to ensure that it would happen. I think that's what went on with this match. But we will wrap it up there. I just put out a video yesterday uh, about my approach to ro the gearing of my roster. I'm trying to do that in a new way uh, where I'm, I'm trying to, instead of being reactive, how is how it's been with the tagging it on to talk videos, showing you what I've done, 
giving you a more active explanation of why I'm thinking about doing things in terms of the larger context of the game. So that's what that video was about. So far the reception has been strong, so we're going to keep with it. I'm probably going to separate it out as its own video series and not part of the talk series. Uh, but we're going to be putting out all these Grand Arena videos one after another over the next coming days. So you will see the next, what, four or five days are going to have Grand Arena videos popping out. We didn't get Captain Drogon today, so probably no major news update warranting a talk video to happen this week. So that's what we're looking at. But thank you for watching. Be excellent to each other. This is still Plays Galaxy of Heroes.